Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a lovely day. Well, after completing this coping saw from the last project, uh, I think the bug bit me and I decided I wanted to make some more frame saws. So first things first, I bought some parts uh, from overseas. So I've, eventually I got them. And yeah, I'm going to use these as scrap wood that I had lying around. So I didn't go buy a new wood, especially for this project. But these are going to be the main parts. I've already flattened them and untwisted them, i.e. completed them. So I won't be bothering with all that stuff again. So yeah, let's see what we can do. Basically, also just to remind, one is going to be a rip saw. And this one is going to be basically a crosscut saw at the end of the day. The first step is to saw each part to length and then make sure it's squared. This is the bottom section of the frame where the saw blade is going to slot in and be secured to. Here I'm drilling a hole in, in the top part of the frame. This is going to be where we're going to apply tension, basically using a threaded rod, as shown here. The hole I'm drilling here is basically for the handle for the rip saw. This will enable us to turn the blade so we can make complex curves. To put less strain on the centerpiece, I'm also going to round it over and then the slot that it's going to fit in is also going to be rounded or hollowed to make it much less stressful or avoid cracking at the end of the day. Here I'm marking the corresponding hollow for the mortise part. Now it's time to saw out the tenon part. As always, this is just like a normal tenon, so we're just going to saw it out here, but also with a slight little bit of an angle. Afterwards, we just basically saw out the parts of the curve in little pieces like this, and then we'll just finish it up with a chisel to make it much more rounder. With the tenon completed, it's now time to chop out the mortise part. This is basically as per normal. With the mortise part complete, now it's just to chop out the hollow and make sure it fits nicely with the tenon. This threaded rod is basically going to be the handle that the ripsaw blade is going to be part of, as shown here. This will enable us to rotate it to the desired angle. The blade will be held in place by this bolt. I've already shaped the handle off screen, as you can see here. And this is basically just a demonstration of where the handles are going to go through for the ripsaw. This block of wood here is going to be our handle. I just pre-drilled the hole so that it will be aligned nice and center before shaping the handle.
With the center holes drilled, it's now time to shape the handle. The first part is going to be to make a rough octagon shape and then take it there. With the octagon shape completed, it's now basically time to taper the handle downwards. To round over the ends of the handle, I'm using my Schloid knife for that purpose, and then basically a rasp just to make it smooth. To secure the threaded rod to the handles, I'm basically making here a two-part epoxy resin mixture. This, as you can see, will go onto the bolt or the threaded rod, and that will be inserted into the handle, and then left for about 48 hours to harden fully. Now it's time to mark the length of the center brace. And here are the main parts done for the rip saw as well as the cross cut saw. Theoretically speaking, I can start using these saws straight away. However, they're still too heavy, number one, and number two, the handles are not yet shaped, so it's very uncomfortable to use them. And just a comparison with the previous saw I made. Here, I'm just adding some flutes to the center brace, just to give it some decoration and then basically to shape it a little bit thinner, just to save on some weight, as you can see here. For the rest of the parts for each bow saw, as you can see here, I'm going to re basically reduce many of the stock, number one to make it lighter, and number two to basically give a good shape for the handles, so it's more easier to use. Instead of applying the normal coats of oil to the wood, I decided I want to try ebonizing the wood basically using an iron acetate solution that I've made. Basically steel wool left in vinegar for a few days. However, before I apply that solution, the first step is basically to coat each part with my own tannin solution. As you can see there, it was basically from the pot boiling some of the other wood shavings. And here basically after applying the tannin solution, I'm applying the ebonizing solution. However, it took a few coats and a few days for it to dry and to basically become quite a nice dark black color. So here you can see a finished part after the ebonizing process. Now just as a last step, I'm just rubbing on some nice coat of oil just to protect it and give it that nice uh, dark shine at the end of the day. And finally, with all of that done, here's basically a quick video showing the assembly for the crosscut saw. So here's the crosscut saw in action. I have to admit though, I'll have to give the teeth another sharpening, 
But then again, all of the saws that I got new or second hand, I usually had to do it twice just to get the teeth sharp enough so it will work correctly at the end of the day. But still, it is still cutting not too bad. And on the other hand, I must also get used to this action since I'm so used to using normal saws. So unfortunately for the rip saw, I was a bit of a fool when I made the handles with the grain direction. So what happened was when I tensioned the saw, as you can see here, it ripped basically. If I flipped the grain direction basically for the layers, this would not have happened. However, not everything was lost. As you can see here, I basically fixed it by pinning and gluing the wood together. So it's holding not too badly. And in this demonstration, I'm just showing how the blade can be turned with the handles. So basically, if you're ripping a piece of wood and the frame is getting in the way, then you hopefully can saw straight past it. Well, if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers!